Hey everybody, final thoughts. Time for Footprints. And folks, I gotta say, do not judge a book by its cover. Because I understand what this game looks like. And honestly, I thought the same thing that you might be thinking when I first uh, looked at pictures of it on Board Game Geek. And even when I read the rule book, my first thought is, hey, I already own Quest for El Dorado from Reiner Knizia. I mean, isn't this just the same thing? It's got the same, you know, randomly generated world out of all these cool uh, tiles. It's got the same kind of race aesthetic of, oh, I'm trying to get to the end because there's big, big points. Now, um... I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. Like I said, I felt the same thing. But here's the deal. This is not a race game. Also, this is not a deck builder. This is an engine building resource gathering game. Um, you know, which has a little bit of a race element because yeah, maybe you want to get to a cave for somebody else. Maybe I mean, but if getting all the way to the end well, getting there first gets you 15 points. Getting there second gets you 14 or 13. It's not that big a deal. This game isn't a race. This game is all about having four cards in front of you from a very, very limited deck. You're only going to have 14 or 15, if you play with one of the uh, variants that come in the game, cards, 15, 14 or 15 rounds to play through, unless somebody really bolts to the end and ends the game early, but that's unlikely. It is hard to make it all the way to the end, and you have to sacrifice a lot to do it. It's less about the race to the end, because again, it's not... It doesn't make sense to race. It's more about uh, the journey along the way. How are you going to work your way through all this environment based on the fact that you know your particular tribe's deck is asymmetric. You've got strengths and weaknesses. In the game I just played, I was very weak against traveling through ice. I was very strong traveling through forests and marsh. And knowing that, knowing how the layout works, planning from the beginning, from the very, very first turn, right, what's the overall way I'm going to be able to maneuver this, knowing I only have a fixed number of turns. I don't get my cards back. I don't reshuffle and go and go and go and go. Every turn in this game, even the early ones that seem so small and slight and inconsequential, are such hugely important and monumental game-changing turns for you because you only get these 14 cards to play. One of them is special. All the other ones are just variations on, hey, I can move through this in a, and combine it with another thing. Or, I love multi-use cards, folks. Move or instead upgrade the move ability and so that you can move better later. And every one card spent not moving to upgrade for later, you better make sure that was worth it. You better be moving towards an area that's going to let you scream through it because you did all those early upgrades. And um, while you're screaming through a given area because of all the upgrades you've put in one type of terrain traversal or nothing, you better make sure you pick the right one so you can pick up a lot of goods along the way. Because the more more of these you have, the more resources you have to do these carvings, which can be a huge source of points. Plus, a good deal of the, uh, what do you call it, the objectives require you to do these carvings. So, they can be even more points. Plus, often the uh, cave bonuses you can get have to do with the carvings as well. So, that's why I'm saying, this is an engine building game. But in most engine building games, hey, I put all these cards together, I make these investments in these particular things, so that when I run my engine, the output is more stuff for me to have, more money that I could spend to buy more cards, more resources that I can use to build more buildings, whatever it might be. In this engine building game, the output of your engine is actual physical traversal across the board. And that's really interesting and really unique. There must be other games that have done it. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Let me know down in the comments if you can think of one, folks. But that's why I said right up front, do not look at this and say, well, you know what? I have Cubitos. That's a dice builder. I've got Quest for uh, El Dorado. That's a, a racing deck builder. I Why would I want to play this game? It's more of the same. This game is so different and so unique. An engine building game driven by multi-use cards that is all about all these interdependencies because there are so many different ways to score points and they really lockstep with each other but every step of the way knowing that that's my last forest card do i play that card now i mean i I could get to that forest and play it, but I would really like to upgrade my forest at least two more times because that would get me the mammoth I need to be able to build that with, um, you know, so that I could bump this up. And only then, after I've upgraded my forest two more times, do I want to play that last forest card. 
But what can I play instead? I it, it literally forces where I'm at. It's the only thing I can move through. Well, that's why I play these other cards not to move, but to upgrade my ability to do things so that when I get the right combination of stuff, that includes the cards in my hand and the fire cards um, and the resources that fuel the fire cards or whatever it might be. This game is something special, and I shouldn't be surprised, folks, because this is from a relatively new publisher, Chili Fox. They started up a few years ago. They put out a party game. I have to admit, I never played it because of the three-player minimum. I don't remember what it was. But that year, they also put out Riverside, which is one of the best um, roll and rights in recent years. Absolutely brilliant game full of tension and angst and really smart thematic integration and much more thematic than most roll and rights. And then last year, publisher Chili Fox gave us Come Together. This is in my top 10 games of the year. Uh, this is in my uh, top 10 hidden gems of the year. This has made so many top 10s for me. This is one of my favorite games in recent years from Chili Fox, from the same folks. And now, this year they're back, bringing us something that I thought I knew what it was when I came in. And it turns out I had no idea. Uh, the next time I do a top 10 games that really surprise me uh, in a good way, I've got to put footprints on the list because hopefully, folks, if you watch my run through all the way to the end, you know, it starts off slow. I mean, you're really doing little baby things. but And it seems like, oh, I'm never going to achieve anything in this game. But, you know, once you've made it to the halfway mark, and the halfway mark comes up very quick. I mean, this is a fast-playing game. What is the official time on it? It's a 1-6 to six player game, uh, 30 to 60 minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, this game is going to scream by, and you are going to start off small, but you level up so quickly to where for the last half of the game, you are doing huge, big, monstrous combinations of stuff, trying desperately to get to that last thing, running your engine one more time. This time I'm running my forest traversal engine, or my um, snow traversal engine, or my mountain traversal engine, because I can get to that space, build that last thing, get the resources that let me pump that up to get that other bonus, and get these big, wonderful combo turns that push you across the finish line in a game that, again, is not a race game. It is a uh, engine building, uh, you know, goods conversion game with a with a lot of really cool twists. And both Jen and I liked it a lot, folks. And that is Footprints. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye